it's helpful when we're trying to define problematic sexual behaviour to think about all sexual behaviours on a continuum from those that are developmentally typical to those that are harmful um, and in the middle are the problematic sexual behaviours. Um, in my experience, professionals find them a little bit harder to define. It's much easier to say whether a behaviour is developmentally typical or harmful. Um, and that can lead to kind of a decrease in confidence around recognising those behaviours. It's also really important to think about the context that might be surrounding those behaviours so that we can understand them better um, and that helps us determine where they sit on a continuum. So for example, we have to think about whether the child has any additional needs, gender, age, power differences, um, the location. So it could be that the child is displaying a developmentally typical behaviour but in the wrong context. So for example, a child touching their genitals but in the classroom. Actually, the behaviour is typical, the context is what is of concern there. When we think about where a behaviour may sit on the continuum, if we think about something like touching private parts, say, in the classroom, the first thing we think is that's not appropriate setting for someone to be touching their private parts. It might be that the teacher has a, a quiet word and just says, you know, we don't do that here, and that's enough to stop a behaviour. So we can put that down to an isolated incident. However, if that behaviour continues and continues despite trying to distract them into other activities, that might be something where we have to start being concerned about, well, why is that child doing that behaviour? We also need to think about things like the impact on the other children around them, about maybe they're witnessing that behaviour and how that might make them feel. Um, if they're doing it when they seem particularly anxious um, or fearful, it, some children can touch their private parts when they're feeling anxious and again this comes back to context being key at all points and it can one behavior can move up and down the continuum depending on the context within which it's set. I think what can also be difficult is that there are less clear reporting mechanisms around problematic sexual behaviour. So generally speaking in our legislation, policy and guidance, the threshold for reporting and for external support is around harmful sexual behaviours and not necessarily around problematic sexual behaviours.